So Cochrane Crowd is a new platform uh, developed to enable willing and able volunteers to help us identify the evidence. It builds on the success of the Embase project, whereby anyone who wanted to could sign up and help screen citations and see whether or not they were describing a randomized trial. And the idea is really that if we can capture and in some way curate the evidence as it comes out, we're then in a much stronger position to be able to find the specific trials we need for our reviews much more quickly. And so within two years of what was the Embase project, uh, a community of over 2,000 people um, helped to identify over 20,000 reports of RCTs from a total of around 200,000 citations collectively screened. So to have had 2,000 people sign up to this task was amazing. And I was often asked, and I still am, why do people sign up? Well, I think an awful lot sign up because they just want to help. However, in addition to this, many feel that it's going to help them to learn and develop new skills. We ran a, a motivation survey last year, and this notion of learning and developing new skills came through loud and clear. Here's just a very small um, handful of some of the responses we got. Uh, and you can see things like hone my skills in identifying RCTs, and to better understand RCTs. So the Embase project is officially finished, but don't be sad about that because the work of it continues now within Cochrane Crowd. And when we built Cochrane Crowd, we kept in mind that many use this task and potentially the other tasks that we're we have planned for rollout very soon as a way to learn more about some aspects of evidence-based medicine. So how does Cochrane Crowd support people performing the task? Well, I'm going to run through what I think are my top 10 features that are already functional within Cochrane Crowd that support contributors doing the task effectively and hopefully supporting them in improving uh, doing it. So the first is really that we want um, anyone who wants to, to be able to join up and to help us identify trials. But there is a compulsory training module, and it's made up of 20 practice records that take you through the main aspects of what we're looking for and what to reject. We also have a quick reference guide to act as a reminder of what's eligible and what should be rejected. We have what we call helpful highlights based on commonly used words and phrases found in records that we're looking for and records that should be rejected. So these red highlights act as warning highlights indicating that the record might be a, re a reject. And here we can see that this is the case because the word meta-analysis is highlighted red and we're not actually looking for meta-analyses, we're looking for reports of, of randomized trials. And then just to show you also, we have uh, yellow highlights and here directing our gaze to the part of the abstract likely to be describing the trial design, which in this case is a randomized crossover study, which is indeed eligible for central. We've done some work on evaluating the effect of the highlights function. And of course, I think quite unsurprisingly, it has made people much quicker at screening, but also that it doesn't have a detrimental effect on accuracy. A lot of people think that, oh, someone will just see a red highlight and instantly reject it. Um, well, we, we have tested that um, and found that actually accuracy has improved when the highlights are switched on as opposed to when we've turned them off. But we'll keep evaluating it because it's a really important area to keep, to keep monitoring. So the next feature is a new one within Cochrane Crowd, and we're watching really closely to see um, how effective it is. A few people have emailed me to say that they like it, which is fantastic, but we do need some hard evidence that it's really helping people make the right decisions on records. And it's the Help Me Decide feature. So what it does is take a screener through a series of questions about the record and makes a suggestion as to what it thinks the right decision is. Another new feature that I'm really excited about, because it's something that a lot of people have wanted since we began the Embase project, um, was to enable people to screen records in areas of interest to them. And as I said before, I work for the Cochrane Dementia Group, 
So I'm interested in screening records that are likely to be about dementia. So here you can see I've entered two key terms in that area, so dementia and Alzheimer's. And what this will do is show me records that contain either of those words. And here's an example. And I must admit I found it a really good way to keep up with the latest research that's being published in my area. And just because it's nice to show some positive feedback, just last week a contributor emailed me to say how much uh, she's getting out of this feature as well. So she's been able to find research valuable for her everyday work. The next feature is that you can add your own highlights. And here you can see that I've added what I call directional or signposting highlights. So in every record, where there are words, the words background, methods, and results, these words will now be highlighted because I've selected that I want those words highlighted. Um, and what's more, in Cochrane Crowd, you can color code your highlights. So if, for example, I wanted methods to sort of be a different color from background and results, I can make it a different color. So now moving on to two really interesting features. Um, that I think help a contributor to learn and improve, uh, mainly because they focus on, on this notion of feedback, which is really important. So under my statistics tab in Cochrane Crowd, a contributor can see their metrics um, around the sort of total number of records they've assessed. And here we can see it's approaching 39,000 assessments for this particular contributor. But perhaps more importantly, they can see the number of records where their decision disagreed with the final decision. So you can see that number over on the right, 480. So that's somewhere between 1 to 2 percent disagreement, which is pretty good going. And then also, just staying with, uh, with this page, scrolling down further, you can see when you've screened and how many you've screened, and then the, the green bar shows the agreements and the red bar is the disagreements. But what's clearly more useful is to actually be able to drill down to those actual disagreements, drill down to those records. And at the moment you can do this under the History tab in Cochrane Crowd. So I can sort by various means, various ways, um, but possibly the most useful is to be able to see the records where my decision, my decision disagreed with the final decision. And here's an example of where I said re reject, but actually it, uh, the record is describing an RCT. There's lots more we want to do with this section. For example, if a record had to go all the way to full text for a decision, we want contributors to know that. We also want to be able to show the supportive text from the record that helped a resolver screener make a final decision. And to be able to show any notes that a resolver might have added to help show how they made that final decision. I think this notion of feedback is critical to a system such as Cochrane Crowd. Without any feedback, contributors would likely feel pretty isolated and unsure and probably not stay engaged for very long. We've learnt that really the type of feedback that people seem to want most is around performance. Their individual performance and their performance as part of a, a team or, or part of the community. And in a live dynamic system such as Cochrane Crowd, feedback on performance in a way that's quick, accurate and meaningful is quite challenging, but it is really critical. And I think we're getting there. So what are the next steps for Cochrane Crowd? Well, it's live now, so please do go and take a look if you haven't already. We're in beta at the moment and we'll remain in beta phase for the rest of the year but it's already very functional and it's offering that RCT identification task to anyone who wants to help us find those trials. In the next month or so, we'll be rolling out some new tasks, uh, two of which are DTA identification and DTA stands for Diagnostic Test Accuracy. So what we want to do, very similar to the RCT identification task, uh, we want to see whether or not uh, as a community, we are able to identify studies of diagnostic test accuracy. And I think those kinds of studies bring with them some, some new challenges, so it'll be really interesting to see how well that works. And also we want to roll out a task that's uh, looking at 
PICO and trial characteristics description. So on those records where we're sure it's describing a randomized trial, can we also start to pull out some of the details that describe that trial? And so PICO, just in case anyone's not, not sure of that, by PICO I mean the population, the intervention, the comparator and the outcomes, but also some additional characteristics as well trial IDs, uh, number, of, number of participants and other things.